Welcome to Miss Stories in Crime. I'm your host, Melissa Thompson. Today, we're going to talk about the updates in the Sophie Long case. Now, this has been a battle that's been going on for over a year, and it's very, very sad. People have been taking sides in this case, and there's a lot of anger as well in this case as the Summer Wells case and Chris Watts case. Keep that in mind. We have to remember, at the end of the day, the priority is this little girl, okay? She is missing. Texas Department of Public Safety issued a missing persons bulletin saying, Sophie Elise Long, and the case number is A21060001, case type involuntary family abduction. She's five feet tall. Her date of birth is September 16, 2010, eye color blue, race white, weight 95 pounds, age of time of missing is 10, hair color blonde, sex female. She was last seen in Seguin, Guadalupe County. State missing from is Texas, county missing, country missing from USA, and in the missing persons report, it's missed, uh, she was last seen on July 12, 2021. I think that could be when the missing person's case was filed, though Courtney has said that she's been missing since July 7th of 2021. Circumstances say missing juvenile is believed to be with her non-custodial parent, Michael Long, and may be en route to Arizona, Colorado, Utah, Mexico, or Argentina. Michael Long is possibly driving an off-white 2010 Ford Edge SUV or a gray van with blacked out windows, an NAR sticker, and a black rack on top. Missing Juvenile has a small burn mark on one of her arms. And then they included a picture of Michael Long. That's an old picture, and he does not look like that at all anymore. So I hope that they update that. Now, 22 hours ago, Courtney, his um, ex-wife or soon-to-be ex-wife, she made an update, and I want to talk to you about that. Apparently, Michael Long filed a motion in the 5th District of Texas, okay? This, and this is what Courtney says about it. This is the first sign of life from Michael that I know of since last week. He filed to attempt to turn over the decision to have her released to the third party that was chosen by the court. To my knowledge, he has not brought her back or notified anyone of his location or where he is keeping Sophie while this is sorted out. That's all I know, but it makes me hopeful they haven't left permanently yet. Okay, and I've included pictures of his filing. Um... Here's some of what it says. On July 7th, 2021, the trial court held a temporary orders hearing in this matter. Um, On July 7th, 21, respondent, the honorable, and then that's the judge, which is redacted, sitting by assignment in the 4147th Judicial District Court ordered that a non-party, non-parent have sole managing conservatorship. Now, that's really important, guys. Um, that the judge wants a third party to have custody of Sophie. On May 20th, 2021, respondent denied Michael Long the opportunity to testify in a case in which he was a pro se litigant. On June 16th, 2021, the Honorable Redacted denied a motion to disqualify and recusal of, and it's redacted, without due process or hearing. Four, Relator files this motion pursuant to Rule 5210 of the Texas Rules of Civic Procedure. And five, it seems reasonably likely that a hearing for the enforcement of temporary orders may be held in the trial court before Realtor's original proceeding in the court is dismissal of. Okay? Now, basically what this is is a stall tactic by Michael Long because what happened is what I've heard is that Michael Long was giving an, a mental evaluation and they do not find him fit to be, 
you know, have sole custody of Sophie, okay? We all know the allegations that have come out. Um, what this poor little girl has been through is just crazy to me. Just thinking about the SA exams that she had to go through, she is going to need some major therapy. Um, and another thing that I've thought of is his obsession with Sophie. You know, he has three other children, and he doesn't seem to care anywhere near about them the way he does Sophie. He only wants to be involved with Sophie and don't care about the other children. Now, it also has been reported that his father, John Long, has been with him, okay? Now, that is not on the official missing persons report, so keep that in mind. And Michael Long's mother, she says she doesn't know where he is. We have to take that with a grain of salt. Now, Kelly Long has a gag order on her by the court because this is a custody issue. It's in civil court. She cannot speak about her daughter missing, which I find incredibly upsetting. Uh, I feel horrible for her. So her friend, Lisa Sadowski, has been speaking on her behalf. Two days ago, she wrote this on her Facebook. Sophie has been missing for a full week. No one knows where she is, but we all know who she's with, Michael Long, her father. He is not supposed to have her. He is dangerous and mentally unwell. He has made numerous threats of harming her or abduct abducting her and taking her to a country where he cannot be extradited. I've always thought he would head for the border because he's getting the heck out of Dodge. He has hundreds of thousands of dollars that are unaccounted for at his disposal. That is scary, guys. As well as a network of people willing to hide him. Pray she is found soon and he is arrested. Pray for Kelly and her family to stay strong and for her lawyers and law enforcement to do the best possible job they can do. Please share this poster and she had made one up before um, that uh, law enforcement did. Also, if you would like to help, please consider donating to the trust that her lawyer set up. It covers court costs and legal fees, which there are plenty right now, because now that she is missing, Kelly has to file another thousand motions in court. The money does not go to Kelly directly. It goes right to her lawyer. You can find the donation link on the lawyer's main website page, and it's um, R-O-U-T-Z-O-N law.com. It has almost been a year since Michael's custodial kidnapped Sophie. Now it's been a week since he full-blown kidnapped her and disappeared. Hopefully some negative press will pressure him into doing the right thing and turning himself over to the police. Okay, so that's Kelly's friend that spoke on her behalf. Um, authorities and other people that know Michael well said, please do not approach him. He is dangerous. He is always, always with a weapon, and a lot of times with multiple weapons, and it has been said that he wears a bulletproof vest. He is mentally unwell right now, in my opinion, and I think it would be very dangerous to approach him because this has been going on for a year, um, what's going on with his daughter. And a lot of it, I think he also has an obsession with Kelly, in, in my opinion. I think he finds this as a way to get back, to, back at her. I think he's upset that the marriage dissolved and he wants... I think he was also jealous of Kelly's boyfriend at the time, and that's how a lot of this started. Now, I know there's a lot of animosity in everything that's been said about Kelly, her boyfriend. You know, Michael was with Courtney. They had a child, and then the next thing you know, he left her for one of the admins of his Facebook groups, okay? So that's what kind of person you're dealing with. He doesn't care, seem to care about his other children. So you could just tell from everything that has been going on, he needs help. 
He is in a bad situation. Sophie's in a dangerous situation. Um, they also said he uses burner phones because he doesn't trust, you, you know, having a plan with data because he doesn't want the government tracking him. He's very, very paranoid. So we have to keep that in mind. Now, there is no Amber Alert issued because I believe that, one, they don't know the license plate of the car. So um, there's also other criteria that they have to reach to make it for an Amber Alert. Amber Alert. Not every child that goes missing gets an Amber Alert, okay? So we have to keep that in mind. And we also have to keep in mind that this is a civil issue. It's a custody battle that has, you know, gone way out of the park, if you will. So, you know, we have to worry about Sophie and the danger that this child is in because of what her father did to her, you know, the coaching and everything that he did has traumatized this child. And, you know, maybe he told her, you know, hey, we're going to take a little vacation. Maybe he convinced her to not bring, like, a cell phone or a tablet, you know, like saying, hey, we're going to go have a fun adventure. We don't need any technology. That is scary that no one has heard from Sophie for this long, okay? So... This is important, guys. I want you to share out her picture everywhere you can because at the end of the day, again, this is a 10-year-old little girl that is missing. And her father, in my opinion, is unstable. And he has had many people that will side with him and will hide him, will help him get to where he wants to go. I'm sure he's going to head out of this country. I mean, he does have money. Um, we know that he received over $400,000. And um, only some of that money was accounted for. So I'm sure he does have financial ways to move him and his child out of this country. And that is scary. I feel so bad for Kelly. And Kelly cannot say anything. Imagine being the mom. Your child is missing. And you can't say anything because the court has a gag order on you. That is disturbing. So, you know, a lot of times we say that in custody battles, the father, you know, doesn't have the same rights as the mom. In this case, I think it's the opposite. The mom has seemed to be dragged through the gutter. Absolutely. And, you know, she seems like she's got her stuff together. Those kids are clean, fed. They do well in school. They go to their doctor's appointments. You know, they looked very happy. There's that video when the police went to, to her house to see her and the children. They all looked happy and fine. She owns her own home, you know. She's not talking craziness to these children. We have to think about that as well. You know, we are not hearing a lot of information coming from Kelly. And you have to think back that Michael, one of his jobs was to how to go viral on the Internet. And the whole thing with the Sophie video last year, that went viral and it caused utter chaos everywhere and it's still causing chaos because now it has become a case where there's a child missing so no matter how we feel like what side you're on in this case you have to remember sophie is missing so please share this out where you can um if you see them contact your local authorities contact you know the police and do not approach them. That That is the most important. We don't want to spook him so bad that, you know, he does something horrible. So let's keep them in our thoughts and prayers tonight and over the weekend and hope that she comes back soon. Um, I hope all of you are well. Um, I'm sending out good positive vibes to all of you. And um, my prayers to all of you that you are well and healthy and safe. And um, 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. Any cases you want to talk about, let me know. I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I love talking to you guys um, in the comments. You have been so kind to me, and it's so appreciative. Tomorrow is a tough day for me. Um, I've told you that my daughter, my eldest daughter, passed away, and tomorrow is her angel anniversary. So it's tough, and I'm trying to stay busy so I can get through it. So if you guys can send me some positive vibes, I would really appreciate it. Thank you all. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.